Welcome back to another episode of Sound Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and today I'll be reviewing the movie Dead Precedents. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. A Vietnam vet adjusts to life after the war while trying to support his family, but the chance of a better life may involve crime and bloodshed. So let's begin with my first pro. I don't know if it was done on purpose, but I noticed some Easter eggs or homages played to Robert De Niro characters or movies here. Like the scene when Curtis is coming back from war and is inside the taxi. That scene reminds me of Taxi Driver. And also the driver through the rear mirror resembles Robert De Niro's character in Taxi Driver. Also, this film really seems like an extension or a retelling of a story from a Vietnam War veteran's point of view. So like the Deer Hunter again with Robert De Niro. So I would like to believe that the Hughes brothers are fans of the Deer Hunter and especially Robert De Niro. Also, Martin Sheen being at the end as the judge and also saying that he is a war veteran seems like his character could be coming off from Apocalypse Now. But then he said he was in World War II in Guadalcanal, so that is how the table. But still, I feel they wanted him for that movie because of that connection or just to play an homage to him. Next pro, if you are fans of the Hugh brothers, then you must be fans of Menace to Society. And if so, you may know the actor who plays the main character in this film or yet the film itself. But the Hugh brothers have had many famous actors in their films. Let's name a few. Chris Tucker, Freddie Rodriguez, Terrence Howard, Samuel L. Jackson, and more. So to say that they have big names in their films is an understatement. Even in this one, the cameo of Martin Sheen, it's a surprise because in the end, he is not even credited in the film. Next pro would have to be the acting of Chris Tucker since we are all used to him being in comedic roles. But here he stands out by really taking the role of a junkie vet and it does come through not just as a secondary character. I would go as far as to say that he does a better job than the main character, Curtis. So yeah, if anybody says Chris Tucker does pure comedy roles like Friday, Rush Hour, and so on, I would reply by saying, by the way, have you seen him in Dead Presidents? If not, they should watch it. Next pro, a film who centers around post-war struggles of veterans, it's still a big issue even now like no jobs to come back to also they return how can i say this not a hundred percent either physically or mentally and they don't get the help they deserve or need and then they have to deal with society that either paints them as the devils of war instead of seeing that they sometimes are just an extension of the political system and decisions and some have no alternatives but to go to war these vets suffer overseas and then when they come back they still suffer and it's just a small glimpse into what they have to deal with so this movie tries to portray that and I give it props for that. And now on to my cons. Okay, so the biggest con is how the film was split into pre-war, then war, then post-war parts. So think of three chapters. I did not like that they took too much time in the war part and how they focus on three characters and then post-war, it was just Curtis. I mean, they did show us Skip, Cleon, and Jose, but they didn't tell us their own stories. I saw this movie as a story in which the character Curtis took all the wrong decisions, sort of like a what-if story. If that was what the Hughes brothers wanted, well, they lingered too long long in the Vietnam part and should have focused more on the post-war part. But if they wanted to show us four different stories of pre-war, then war, followed by post-war, well, they did it wrong. I would say show us the characters and what they went through to make them want to be part of the heist at the end of the movie. Show us Skip and how he went to war, then came back as a junkie, then for him to be like, yes, a heist seems my best alternative right now. Or Curtis, show him before going to war as him trying to make his own path in life and not follow his brother's path. And then after having all the doors being close on him as he came back from war as a hero and that driving him to choose the heist for a solution. Because I gotta say, for a three-part movie, the heist being the ending, for me, it was too short and really didn't add much to the character development. In the end, I really wanted more of these characters and see what made them become what they were at the end after the war and thus them opting for the heist solution at the end. But for this film just to end with a bus ride to jail, it didn't seem like it fulfilled its job. Next. Con. This actually surprised me that I didn't catch it on my first watch. I remember re-watching this film with friends and everybody talking about the heist and I was saying that it was short but I was going to pay more attention to it but then I began to spot mistakes here and there and some discrepancies. For one, the guards never loaded the money onto the truck so for Jose to have blown the doors was unnecessary. The money bags were dropped on the loading dock so yeah, just a grab and run. Next, the guns kept changing and the number of shots were not consistent with the actual guns. For example, revolver were not actually shot six times but multiple times and not shown them reloading. Some will say, hey, it's the 90s, give them a break. I mean, even old western movies showed them reloading their weapons, so why not here? Plus, if you put this in the trailer as your main selling point for the movie, you might as well have to pay a little more attention to it. So yeah, a few mistakes here and there kind of really ruined my rewatch of the movie and after that, I cannot just unsee this part. So my grade for this movie is going to be a 6 out of 10. The film was fine to watch but it didn't flow well. It felt as if it was 
was two movies being combined into one but never got there. I did see them try to shine light on the post-war vet struggles and especially in the color community and what they have to go through to survive in this world as they try to reintegrate themselves. But as for the heist, it felt it was more of an afterthought than the main focus. From what I remember from the TV trailers was mostly the heist scene but in the film it was just basically a scene. So the film was fine but don't expect a full metal jacket, the deer hunter or something along those lines. So that does it for this review of Dead Presidents. Please join us next time where we're going to review The Basketball Diaries. I was just going to sniff a bag but a guy says if you're going to sniff might as well pop it and if you're going to pop it might as well mainline. I was scared of needles but I gave in. Please comment and subscribe. You can find our social media links below and like always keep watching movies.